off the note, I had a horrendous game uh, yesterday. I just want to make a quick point about the opening. Um, I know it was a terrible game to post, but I played an early D takes E4. So in the French defence, if uh, Knight D2 or Knight C3 is played, the two main options. You do have um, the option in both of those to play D takes E4. You see D takes E4 here. Uh, and if Knight D2, you can still play D takes E4. So it's good as a sort of uh, you know, lazy approach. If you want to sort of minimise the amount of theory, you end up with this position. And the weird way I played it yesterday was actually knight f6. And you see, only a minority of players play knight f6. And the reasoning I gave was a kind of burn variation. Uh, but you'll note here that here, uh, and this is noted by my good friend Paul Georgiou, that actually this is very different from the burn line uh, because white has succeeded in doubling uh, black's pawns here. Uh, the way I play it, g takes f6, and white still has uh, the dark square bishop. And the reasoning I gave was to make sure white wasn't ever going to play e5. But white has that dark square bishop, and this isn't so hot. g3 was played by my opponent, but it looks, you know, statistically it looks good f for white. Now, if we go back and and look at how um, you know the burn variation is played against um now we have to be careful here knight c3 uh, we can play imagine white plays um imagine i play knight f6 which is what i usually play in the burn variation bishop g5 there's a crucial difference here to appreciate that d takes e4 here knight takes e4 bishop e7 uh you'll note that white uh only in a small minority of uh times plays knight to f6 takes f6. White is usually giving up the dark square bishop. Now this is significantly different. So what I what I chose wasn't a path to the burn variation as I know it because white has lost the dark square bishop. You see that difference. And white's not usually going to play uh, knight takes f6 here. Because uh, that's losing you know potentially another tempo uh, after g takes f6. Uh, you know, very few games, but White's like losing a tempo here. Um, although we seem to have a similar position, you know, it's it's better. It's an improvement. It's an improvement on what I played. So you see uh, the motivation, therefore, for the quick D takes E4. If we go back, needs actually, I believe now, to be uh, more motivated by the Fort Knox kind of system. Which is knight d7. This is more solid, or bishop d7 is like fort knots, I think, actually. Sorry. Bishop d7 to c6 is one alternative. But knight d7 is the most common. Now, bishop d7 um, is is a solid thing where, say, say knight f3, you can play bishop c6, and you can play this against both the Tarash and the Winnower. And basically, here, um, Okay, you don't have to take on e4 immediately. You can play knight d7. Let's follow this through because it applies to both uh, the Tarash and the Winnower. You end up with a position which, okay, it might not be that that hot, but it's definitely better than my game continuation. I haven't got structural, you know, damage. It's a little bit passive here. Okay, fine. Uh, but the other, the most popular way of playing this after d takes e4. Is to just play knight d7, and you know if you're playing, you know IMs or whatever on the ICC on Blitz, you want a solid system as black, and maybe try for wins as white. You don't want to get completely done over as black. And I, I thought that last night. I thought uh, it's a bit like the chase. You know, if they've got a lot in the bank, you know, if you've got high rating, you know, you don't need to try and win every game. If if you want to like uh, try and make rating progress, but no, I'm trying to play dynamic sometimes overly dynamically with the double pawns and a bit too keen when white is it hasn't even given up the dark squared bishop that's that's one of the main points i want to make here so if you're going to play d takes e4 knight d7 and we get this this is one of the more solid approaches knight gf6 so you can recapture with your knight if knight takes f6 and if bishop g5 okay h6 is common or bishop e7 and if if there is an exchange here, 
you know this this has been played a lot and black can now strike out with c5 that's not a big advantage if you look at the ridiculous game he did actually prevent c5 because queen a5 was ineffectual because of c3 and that's a basic you know opening trap also made making things you know lost but here c5 is now possible and the point of c5 is to sort of help liberate uh black's game uh, say white does reply say, say with a passive move sometimes you can get a comfortable isolated you know queen's pawn um but uh white say say white refuses an isolated queen's pawn knight takes d4 and again it looks solid you know there's nothing really too critically wrong with the black position so this is just a point of reference just want to reinforce even the losses to have a look to see the insights if you're going to play d takes e4 it shouldn't really be with the intention of getting double pawns um now th there's one gap here uh in in the knight f6 line well yeah e5 is possible Th that's why bishop e7 as a waiting move is very popular uh just bishop e7 as a waiting move uh trying to encourage you know knight f3 and again you can strike out with with c5 so you can try and uh, make e5 you can try and discourage it because without committing the knight yet you know uh, c5 and maybe aim for the isolated queen's pawn situation so it's just some points from yesterday's game about the kind of lazy approach to d takes e4 which can be used interchangeably against the winner against the tarash i hope you got something from this comments or questions on youtube thanks very much